Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. I'm going to talk today about the auto throttles flap synchro issues on the Boeing 737 Classic in the wake of the Sirawayan 737-500 accident. Okay, so the, the accident itself, if you recall, was on the 9th of January 2021. Uh, a 737-500 PKCLC, which first flew in 1994 and was operated by Sirawaya Air, crashed into the Java Sea five minutes after takeoff from Jakarta. No mayday call was, was made, and sadly all 62 people on board died. The graphic on the right there, courtesy of planefinder.net, shows the final track of the aircraft, and below it, shows the the plots of altitude and airspeed. Uh, health warning with those plots, this is from um, ADS-B data uh, and not uh, hard FDR data, so the data may have some inaccuracies in it. Now one month after the accident, the, uh, the Indonesian authorities issued their preliminary report and in it there were, there were many findings, um, no analysis be because it, it, it was just basically a, a statement of some basic facts that were known at the time. Um, and the findings which caught my eye were, were, were the following. After the aircraft had climbed past 8,150 feet, the thrust lever position of the left engine started reducing whilst the thrust lever position of the right engine remained. The FDR data also recorded that the left M1 decreased whilst the right engine M1 remained. So what this is saying is, is that um, when the aircraft climbed above 8,150 feet, the number one engine thrust lever and M1s started to reduce. The next paragraph says that uh, when the aircraft altitude was about 10,600 feet, the aircraft began turning to the left. The thrust lever position of the, the left engine continued decreasing whilst the thrust lever position of the right engine remained. So it looks like the f for at least 2,500 feet, or over the course of two and a half thousand feet, the the left engine started to reduce thrust. Why, of course, we don't know yet. Um, and it certainly appears that it may have gone unnoticed by the crew. The report also um, has some interesting defect history. Um, it records that the aircraft had previously had a, a pilot report of the auto throttle being unserviceable and rectification work was conducted over three days um, uh, as follows. So on the 3rd of January, a pilot reported that the auto throttle was unserviceable. The engineer rectified it by cleaning the, the, the auto throttles uh, or the auto throttle computer's electrical connector. After reinstallation, a bite test was performed and the result was good. The following day, the, the engineer tried cleaning the auto throttle electrical connector, but the problem remained and it was, it was written up as a, as a differ defect. On the 5th of January, the engineer rectified the, the, the defect from the, the 4th of, of January by cleaning the, the toga switch and then conducted a bite test on the on the computer. The bite test was good and the, the defect was then closed. Now that was four days before the instant flight and what we don't know yet is if the aircraft flew between then and the, 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 the incident uh, or if any other incident or any other um, defects or abnormalities were reported. Five days after publication of this preliminary report, Boeing issued or reissued um, an existing flight ops technical bulletin uh, called Upset Recovery. 
and this was to reinforce active flight crew monitoring of, of aircraft state and flight path management to prevent aircraft upsets. Now this is not a, a, a bulletin directed specifically at the 737. You can see it's, uh, it was actually issued or reissued to all uh, Boeing fleets. I mean, upset recovery is not particularly a 737 uh, phenomenon. It, it, it applies to all airliners, well, all, all aircraft, actually. So th this was this was reissued, um, but I think the timing was significant to to be reissued five days after the the preliminary accident report, which showed a, uh, a loss of control. I think was significant. Now, about five weeks later, Boeing issued a multi-operator message. The, these are things that, that we as pilots don't generally see. They're, they're, they're issued to airline management or the, or the, the, the maintenance organizations for, for, for aircraft. Um, and this was issued saying that a flap synchro wire failure may go undetected by the autothrottle computer. And it advised operators to perform electronic checks of the, the autothrottle computer to confirm the wire is connected within 250 flight hours. So you probably like me may on hearing this ask what are the flap inputs to the the, the autothrottle? Um, well I've shown them on the the graphic on the right there that there are actually two uses uh, for it or, or two, two sort of areas. Um, now th this is only applicable to the 737 classics. The originals were different, the, the NG and the Max are different. Um, they're similar, but they are different. So please remember we're only talking about classics here. But on the classics, the, the flat position is used to compute minimum safe airspeed and maximum angle of attack. It's also used in the generation of control logic. Now, the control logic case is the one we're we should all be familiar with, which is in an autoland. Um, and the logic is that uh, the autothrottle will retard. Uh, if the autothrust is in speed mode, the flaps are beyond 12 and a half, i.e. 15 or, or above. The rad alt is below 27 feet. Or, and th this is one that I must admit I wasn't aware of till I did the research on this, the, the autopilot flare mode is, is engaged plus 0 0.8 seconds. So under those conditions, the 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 auto throttle will will retard. Hard to see what any of that has to do with the Sirawayan case. Anyway, auto throttle computers, like all computers, they get updated for improvements. This is absolutely normal, um, and and quite quite usual in in the life of any computer, be it a hardware or a software update. Now, back in December 2000, the FAA issued AD 2023-34, which was applicable to all classics, and it required the replacement of the existing order throttle computer with a new improved one that included an asymmetric cruise thrust monitor. The reason for this is is the one I've highlighted there in, in yellow, and, I, and the extract from that is the following. This amendment is prompted by reports of asymmetric thrust conditions during flight caused by irregular autothrottle operation, in which the thrust levers slowly move apart, causing the aircraft to bank excessively and go into a roll. Well, that to me sounds exactly like what might have happened on the Sirawayan accident. We, we don't know yet, it's, it's, it's far too early to say, but, but certainly prima facie from the data that could fit what happened. So I guess the question is as the this AD was issued in 2000 and required all aircraft to, to be replaced with it with a new computer which would prevent this how did it happen on the Sirawayan flight if indeed that's what did happen? Well the answer is in here. On the 18th of May 2021, which is yesterday as I record this, the FAA issued AD 2021-0814. Now there's a lot in this paragraph so I'll, I'll, I'll break it down. Um, 
Further investigation has, has revealed that a design update for the order, order throttle computer required by the original AD of, uh, back in 2000 does not properly account for a possible latent failure of the flap position sensor. Now, this is one data component needed to provide the logic necessary for the asymmetric cruise thrust monitor to operate. Now I don't know what the logic might be but my guess would be if you look at the wording or the, the nomenclature of this it, if it's an asymmetric cruise thrust monitor the logic might be that one of the conditions for for the aircraft knowing it's in the cruise is that the flaps are up but I, I again I don't know that this is just a hypothesis by 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 me so reading on failure of the asymmetric cruise thrust monitor to engage during a large thrust asymmetry event could result in loss of control of the airplane. Uh, that's logical. At this time the preliminary data of the ongoing accident investigation shows that it is highly unlikely that the accident resulted from a latent failure of the flap synchro wire. Now this is a huge statement for the FAA to make. To rule out the possibility or so, at, a, at any rate saying it's highly unlikely that this was the cause of, of the, the accident um, I think is, is really going out on a limb by the FAA but um, that's what they've done however, comma, the FAA has determined that the unsafe condition identified in this AD could exist or develop in a classic and that this AD is therefore necessary to address the identified unsafe condition. Well, I would certainly agree with that. Okay, so the directive, what does it actually say to do? Uh, th this is it. It says, within 250 flight hours, or two months after the effective date of this AD, whichever occurs first, perform the applicable order throttle computer Byte test, order throttle byte test LRU interface, and that's the one I've highlighted on the on the screens on the right. So you go into the maintenance byte index, select order throttle, then select LRU interface. I don't unfortunately have the screenshots of um, of the next screen on, but um, but anyway, th th this is just to give you an idea of of, of what happens. And before further flight, do all applicable corrective actions in accordance with paras 1 to 5 of the Boeing multi-operator message dated March 30th, 2021. So what that's saying is you not only do the by test, but you do further checks. Now, what those further checks are, we don't know, I, or at least I don't know because I don't have sight of the, of the multi-operator message, but I would imagine it is a physical check of the of the the wire in question. After all, the the, the byte test, if the byte test passes, it shows you nothing about the general condition of that wire. What you really need to do is actually get in there and have a look and and see what that what the condition is because it could be just on the point of failure but hasn't failed yet. Um, it, the, it 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 could reveal uh, a whole lot of things so uh, it, it you never know that the multi-operator message may even require replacement of the of the the affected wire but again this is all hypothesis um, and it finishes by saying repeat the test thereafter at intervals not to exceed 2,000 flight hours so that's the directive from the from the FAA remember the Boeing multi-operator message was only advisory this is mandatory All right, so the only difference really between the the multi-operator message and the the AD was in the timings of the, of the of the byte test. So if if I quote you again from the from the AD, the FAA has confirmed that accomplishment of the applicable byte test in the the maintenance manual detects the flap synchro wire failure. So that's good. 
This test is currently not required to be performed repetitively, leading to a potential latent failure if the test is not performed regularly, which will be required by the SAD. So that is telling us what the difference is. It's the repetitive check. Now if you look at the table on the right hand side of the screen, you can see I've, I've drawn up the differences between Boeing's multi-operator message and the, and the FAA's AD. And the bottom row there is the follow-on check, which Boeing didn't require, but the FAA now does. The other change, a subtle change, is that Boeing only required the check to be done within 250 flight hours. But the FAA have insisted that this check is done within 250 flight hours or 12 months from now, or 12 months from yesterday. And that is because, I, I would imagine, because in the present COVID-19 environment, utilization rates of aircraft are very, very low, or, or, or many aircraft are, are certainly very low. Um, and 250 flight hours could take quite a long time to come around. So the FAA is saying, you know, let's put a, a ceiling on this and say two months, within two months, these checks have got to be conducted. So to summarize um, all of this, the order throttle on the 737 Classics has now got an asymmetric cruise thrust monitor. It's had that since 2000. All aircraft should have this because all aircraft need to be compliant with the, with the AD of, of year 2000. However, a bite check is needed to detect whether the asymmetric cruise thrust monitor will function or not because the, 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 the wire from the flap synchro could be defective. These bite checks must be conducted within 250 flight hours or by the 2nd of August 2021 and every 2000 flight hours thereafter. And finally, just to reiterate the, the FAA statement, at this time the preliminary data of the ongoing accident investigation shows that it is highly unlikely that the accident to SJ-182 resulted from the latent failure of the flap synchro wire. All right, that's it from me. Um, if you enjoyed this video, as always, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, tell your colleagues. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, thank you and safe flying.